Hello students, this is lesson U3806. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to say, I can use perpendicular and angle bisectors to solve problems. All right, so what I want to do in this lesson, yes, just as the target suggests, we are going to be talking about perpendicular and angle bisectors, and we've already worked with perpendicular and angle bisectors in several different contexts. Uh, however, um, we have not thought of it in terms of satisfying a set of conditions. And uh, let me just have you think about the following, um, following puzzle, if you will, okay? So I have points A and B, okay? I have these two points here. I want you to think of all the points, okay? Find all points. that are equal or actually I'll just write it like this that are equidistant and this word okay what it means is okay that are equidistant it sounds exactly like what it is so all points that are equal in distance okay between points a and B. And then similarly, I have another uh, uh, um, another puzzle, okay, that's really, really similar to this, okay? So I have here, I have A, B, and C, okay? I want you to find all points that are Again, equidistant between segments AB and CB. So pause the video, see if you can figure out like how to construct this, okay? All right, so welcome back. So having thought of this a little bit, okay, uh, I hope that you guys were able to come up with the following um, answer. So all the points that are going to be equidistant, okay, between it points A and B, well, that turns out it's going to be like right there, right? It's the halfway point between points A and B. That is not quite it yet, okay? There's actually an infinite number of points. So I can also draw another point there, 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 and all of these are going to be the same distance away between points A and B. Okay? They're going to be the same points. They're going to, I mean, not same point, they're going to be the same distance. So all of these points, okay, that are on that line, okay, they are going to be equidistant between points A and B. Similarly, okay, if I want to find all the points that are equidistant between segments AB. So that means this length right here, okay, has to be that same distance away. This is going to be the same length away. And this is going to be the same length away. And so on and so forth. Okay, what is this going to turn out to be? It's again a straight line, okay? Now, really important though, when we're finding how far you are away from something, okay? The following needs to be said. So if I have a line, okay, and I wanna find out how far away a point is away from that line, is the distance that this point is away from the line going to be the perpendicular distance, or is it going to be some random like line, uh, or some random point that I'm finding the distance away from? Of course, it's gotta be the perpendicular distance. So in other words, all of these lengths right here, okay? that I drawn in, they are gonna form a right angle. Again, pause the video to see if, um, if these concepts sink in. And if not, you know, definitely uh, ask teachers, ask your peers, okay, why these two concepts um, should, and make, uh, should make sense, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about that first, the diagram on the left a little bit, okay, which is going to lead us to the perpendicular and angle bisector theorem. So that vertical line, as it turns out, is actually the perpendicular bisector of, se of the horizontal segment. It's the, hor it's the perpendicular bisector of that line, okay? So in this case here, I drew 
uh, ADC, right? So these two segments are going to be the same. All right. So that line, this vertical line, is the perpendicular bisector. It's going to bisect that segment there. All the different points are going to be the same distance away from the two endpoints. So what exactly is the perpendicular bisector theorem saying then? Okay, so if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is going to be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of said segment. So the key takeaway here is, I'm going to use a highlighter, is that these segments here are going to be the same length. That this segment there is going to be the same as that, and this the same as that, and so on and so forth. Okay, all of those segments are going to be the same. The second concept here, okay, which was the angle bisector theorem. As I've said before, these segments are going to be the same, these segments are going to be the same distance apart, and they're going to form 90 degree angles with the two sides, thereby forming these series uh, sequence of little right triangles everywhere do you see that there's like overlapping right triangles one following another okay and yes we have these two angles are going to be the are going to be congruent okay so what is what does the angle bisector theorem say it says that if a point is on the angle is on the bisector of an angle then it is going to be equidistant from the two sides of the angle and vice versa if a point is equidistant from the two sides of an angle, then it is on the angle bisector. How can we apply such concepts to real problems then? Let's take a look. So what we want to do is we want to find the length of AB and AD. All right, so now pause the video, see if you can see if you can figure out what this is, okay? Um, and when we return, we'll, we'll talk about this. All right, so having thought about this a little bit, I noticed that BC here and CD here, they are the same length, are they not? Yes, they are. And B and AC here appears to be bisecting BD. Hence, AC is the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so if that is the perpendicular bisector, then that means AB and AD, therefore, must be the same length. So I can say that 6x minus 10 will equal to 3x plus 2. And of course, there are alternate ways of explaining this, right? If the left side here, uh, if the right side is a right angle, the left side, therefore, must also be a right angle because we're dealing with a linear pair. And the side over here is being shared. So I, you can also say that triangle ABC is going to be congruent to triangle uh, ACD because of side angle side. I mean, all of these are... Uh, concepts that are interconnected and there's myriad of different ways that you can think about this problem. So anyway, you can think of it as AB being congruent to AD as CPCTC. So again, you don't necessarily have to use perpendicular bisector theorem, but know that this is another option now. Okay, so 6x minus 10 is equal to 3x plus 2. So then I can add, nine, uh, add 3x to both sides and add 10 to both sides. I'll end up with Actually, I meant subtract 3x. So I'll end up with 3x is equal to 12. Divide by 3, I'll end up with x is equal to 4. If x is equal to 4, I can find out what ab is and what ad is, respectively. So I know that ab is going to equal to 6 times 4 minus 10. That's going to be 24 minus 10, which is 14. ad will also equal to the same thing. 3 times 4 plus 2 is, in fact, 14. All right. Alternatively, not alternatively, the second problem that we are going to look at uh, is going to require you to apply the second concept of this video, of this lesson. So looking at this right now, okay, I noticed that angle J uh, is bisected by segment LJ because here I see we have two angles that are going that are congruent to one another. Pause the video to see if you can figure this out on your own. Recognizing that this is actually an angle bisector, that LJ is an angle bisector, and L 
is a point on the angle bisector, we can immediately conclude that 2x plus 3 is going to equal to 4x minus 11. Now, is this the only way of thinking about this through the use of an angle bisector? Of course not, because if you think about this, right, LJ is congruent to itself. Angle LKJ, which is this right angle over here, is congruent to the other angle over there. So really what we have here is the two triangles are congruent based on, you guessed it, it's angle angle side. It's not hypotenuse leg because the two right angles are congruent and the two angles that the two Ha uh, the top half and the bottom half are congruent, and then we have the shared side, okay, which is a hypotenuse. Even though we're dealing with a hypotenuse, this is not hypotenuse leg because we don't know any information about the legs, whether or not they are congruent. So you can think of this as angle angle side, and then think of LK being congruent to LM because of CPCTC. So again, different ways of thinking about it, but really, bottom line, um, you know, all of math is thinking about different cons I mean the same concept in myriad different ways that leaves us with a lot of room and a lot of flexibility to problem solve all right so we're going to solve for what x is now we're going to subtract both sides by 2x we end up with 2x and then we're going to subtract I mean add both sides by 11 so I end up with 14 so therefore x divide both sides by 2 I end up with x is equal to 7 if x is equal to 7 I can then put uh, substitute 7 back in to find out what LK and LM are. So LK is going to be two times seven plus three. So that's going to be 17. And LM is going to be seven times four or four times seven minus 11. And again, this is going to equal to 17. And that's it.